a short little closet confessions about belts. I don't know how many of you have them. I don't know if you think you can wear them or not. I think everyone can wear a belt. And my general rule of thumb is, if you are very short-waisted and long-bodied, in other words, your boob and your waist meet together quickly, never do a belt that would be, for example, that thick, because it's just going to give you just no separation. Do something probably maybe maximum that thick. If you have a long body and short legs, you can have a thicker belt. The other thing as well is you can move your waist up. So if you have a dress where you feel it's too high-waisted, you can use a belt to bring the waist down, which I'm gonna show you now. Rigs are great, but they're really good for long-legged, um, short-waisted women. It's very high waist on me, do you see? But I'd like to put a belt on them to bring down the waist. I've done a little bit of moon on my eye with some star and think that you can do that vice versa. If you've got something too low-waisted, you can wear a belt at the top of the waist and then bring your waist up by having the seam at the bottom and the top of the belt above to show a new place for your waist. But let's look at some belts now. Favourite treasures, which are vintage belts. Now, when I say vintage, I'm not talking 1930s. I'm talking about things from the 70s and 80s. This is a 1970s Givenchy belt. Um, made of leather and you can get fantastic belts and I adore belts. I've got this one here which I don't know if I fit anymore. That's a really really old Yves Saint Laurent belt from the 70s. So I'm, I could do as the velvet's thin, I could just kind of winch it in and just wear it more as a sort of dress over trouser look and the fabric's such a beautiful soft silk velvet that it, it doesn't bulk up. Yeah. So I'll do that and I'm wearing a way too tight Mew Mew little thing and pulling down a top, the only way then to not make your legs look they begin from here is to then belt that top. And that I love and I kind of like thinking, you know, Christmas day floating around the house with a pair of trainers, I would actually probably do this. So I need to get my waist back in proportion. So I'm taking now the two colours that are in the trouser and this and I'm just putting this belt on. It's a really old vintage Saint Laurent belt. And I'm just gonna see if that What do we think? That really works. Yeah? Yeah. And I haven't done that belted shirt over trousers for ages. And if you are short-waisted, you could do it with like a little thin gold belt. But because I'm quite long-waisted, I need the width of the belt to really draw in my waist. Because short-waisted people usually go in more at the waist, but for a shorter period of time. And long-waisted can just not really go in so we need the thickness of the wide belt to make our waist go in more mm. so that's one way of wearing it let me just have a look yes i love that i really feel good in that your legs look so long <laughs> i know i have got very high heels on i've got old robert clergy because the dress is very busy i didn't want to put a really thick belt on it i just felt also with the length i didn't want to take up too much room with the belt so i'm yeah. going for a very very old dark green mark jacobs belt I never oh. usually wear a belt this thin, but I just thought, is it better with a bit of darkness there or is it better like that? And I just felt it needed a bit of that definition. I have to say, I think that collection was actually 1997. It was before Lila was born, so maybe 2000. Anyway, three of my latest belts from Topanga Bay or Topanga, which is a canyon outside LA. And there's a really nice vintage shop there. So I got this belt, which is like a real cowboy belt. And it was $40. Love it. Lila wants steel already. I got this old 70s belt, but very beautifully done with a beading. Really heavy and beautiful for a summer dress. And then another belt I got recently was this Celine belt from Vestier Collective for £130. And it's a really beautifully made belt. It's from Celine when Phoebe did it. And I love this belt. I put it on cheaper leopard dresses and it makes it look more expensive. How I sorted, this first drawer is my Ikea wardrobe. And I put these at the bottom. It's such a waste of space at the bottom wardrobe. So I love these drawers. And then I have some Muji containers like this that I take out um, some of the dividers so that they are the right size. So over here are my metal and silver belts, metal and silver belts, textured patterned belts, gold belts, gold and black belts. And then these are bigger belts, bright colors, browns of various degrees, their white summer belts, jeans belts, the Fendi belts, some sort of uh, Mew Mew belts, and the um, thicker black belts. So that one goes in. I love these IKEA drawers. And in the bottom, we have wider flat belts. We have pieces of fabric, which I use as belts and my scarves a bit. White bits of fabric I use as belts. 
sequin scarvy things and belts that go in loops that I've taken out. A few other belts there and room perhaps for some new ones. Through my life, I've been a bit of a multiple person, which in some instances, you know, you love something desperately and you want to get more, like the T-shirts I get with the shoulder pads, that kind of thing. But I did this with Fendi belts, <laughs> slightly different. And I got these belts like this. Now, most of them are too small for me and Lila can wear them, but they were utterly gorgeous and they changed any single outfit. So this is one with olive green and that color that sort of like mustard but I wore it over a dress that was the color of the green so you just in a way saw this jewel of something so if you can find belts that have a big motif at the front the color of the sides the same color as dress it just gives you a winched in waist but it's all about the uh, ornament more than the belt itself breaking you up so you don't just break up in a belt you want to winch in um, this is a black one with the green and then I also got a black one with the mustard colour again. And the other way is to bring down the waist and wear a thick belt, which I'm going to show you now, which I don't know if I would still keep it ruched up if I did this, because it might just be that I can't fit this belt anymore. But imagine if I could fit this belt. You can do it. Yes. And then pushing down that. That is so bloody cool. <laughs> it's really cool. What's interesting is when I look through all these belts, probably the label I've bought the most and I haven't always known it's Saint Laurent. And when I picked it up, are Saint Laurent vintage belts. This is another one. I've worn this so much, it's just about broken here. I've lent it to so many people to make dresses successful. But it's a take on a corset belt. And you just have this back bit here, which is some um, string to make it go in or out, depending on, you know, my size, my waist. <laughs> but it's beautiful, it's simple, clean. There's, the hardware isn't too strong. Patent, not too wide, not too narrow. It's my perfect winching in belt and comfortable to wear. I do think most women can wear corset belts. Now they could be narrower if you're very short-waisted, but this is a belt from, I think it's from Alessandra McQueen. I've had this for 15 years and it just winches in your waist because it's high here and low there. It actually gives this wonderful Edwardian hourglass feeling to your body so if you're somebody who's up and down and you want to create that shape like that you stand, but even sitting down you can see how that's in and out such a flattering feminine shape then consider getting a belt which is wider here and narrower there corset belt and if you are very short-waisted you could do this but have one where the middle bit still leaves the line of your body visible so it's not doing that which can cut you up but it's letting the line show through. So it doesn't break up your body. These are some of the best investments for so many things in your wardrobe, mm. is the stretchy belt with something at the front. And if you are short-waisted, it's really good to have a hole to the fabric at the front, because if you have a thicker belt and the fabric goes all the way across, it really cuts you up. So if you wear a belt with this thickness, you need to see the flow of your body in the middle here. But I like the cleanness of this, the fact the buckle's there, the fact at the back it's just really clean. Yes. And this has become like a long skirt, sexiness, floaty, but I don't feel overwhelmed by fabric. Another belt I love is an Obi belt. This is one of them. I got this from a vintage shop about 20 years ago, but I put it round my waist like that, and then it goes through these holes and comes round the front, and then you just tie it. So. It's a softer way to do a belt because they're generally fabric. I love the fact this one's metallic and you can tie it just down, hanging down like that or in a little bow. You can find these and also you can make them. They're not that difficult to make because they're literally a piece of fabric. You need a certain um, hardness in the fabric because you don't want them to totally uh, collapse. But I wish actually I also had this in silver and I love the way that the ends have just been given sort of beautiful shapes. So when you tie it, it looks really elegant. It is a very pale gold in this. So I don't want to go wrong and do the wrong kind of gold. I want a belt because I just feel the middle bit is a bit boring. So I'm taking a really old belt. I collect vintage belts. This is an old Allegra Hicks belt. I'm gonna put it round my waist and what I love, I'm wearing it back to front. And the reason for that is I want just texture at the front like that. And at the back, this separates out and puts back into proportion the back of the dress, which is actually a bit plain and makes my bottom half look bigger. But by putting the belt there with all of the noise around the bottom, I'm wearing it so it sits in the small of my back, 
gives a good shape to my body and it reproportions me. I probably buy 50% of my belts vintage. It's where I buy the most vintage. This is a really old 70s Saint Laurent belt, which I love. I don't even know when I fit it, frankly, because it's too tight for me, but it's got room for me to get more holes. So I'm actually gonna to invest today in a hole puncher which is just something why, God knows why I haven't had in my wardrobe yet. And I'm gonna make that a bigger hole punch because I think that could be amazing just on some plain dresses to give it something extra. A few of you know that I don't like um, ties on many clothes. And I take them off. I have a Dries Van Noten beautiful sequin jacket, but I don't wear this tie with it because it makes it look like a dressing gown. But I do wear this as a belt and I do wear it as a little scarf that I just put on things. So sometimes putting Bits that go around clothes in your belt cupboard makes you wear them differently. And I love this little bit of sparkle. Many of you know my little scarf that I've always had from Saint Laurent and we've tried to get copied. Mint Velvet did a copy if you like the idea of this. But I just, especially during the festive season, having that little slither there can lift your whole face when you're tired. So if you have any fabric belts that you can wear around your neck, think about that. Oh, I've got another one for you. That's now given me the idea to take some belts and wear them as scarves. This is a really old bit of fabric. I don't know where I got this from. I used to get quite a few of these from Prada, but I don't know if it is. Now I used to wear it for dresses, but I could also just have it around my neck and bring it round to the front and have it hanging down like that. So if I had something on that was sort of burgundy plum it might look nice but actually I quite like the navy with it but just to add color around your face when you think do I suit the color of the top 100% or 70% bring the color that suits you most as close as you can to your neck another thing I do is I love to collect belts that go with and make an outfit in an unusual color or wearing contrasting colors so this purple belt is another vintage belt and it's from Paloma Picasso, Picasso's daughter, who used to um, make jewelry, accessories, etc. And it's just such a beautiful color. It's a real 80s belt. And those colors, that gold and that purple is so 80s. And I wear this with gold, I wear it with purple. And again, I got this in a little store in Miami. It was about sort of $40. I think that my favorite belts are generally vintage belts because they have such a history and there's only one of them. But if you're looking on sites, Vestia Collective have great belts, Vinted, Minted, The Real Real in the US, all these uh, pre-love sites will have great belts. This is one of my favorite summer belts. I got it in a secondhand store, it was Diana von Furstenberg. It's sort of what I call an Obi belt, but because they're so thin, the little leather straps, when you put it on, it gives you a great waist, but you bring it round and you tie it and it's, neater in a way. I can show you now how I wear it in the summer with my white broderie on glazed dresses, but I love this. If I lost it, I would be gutted. Amazing how you tweak details. What I realize actually, and Annie says this, the leather at the front is quite modern, but not in a bow, but double knotted. Oh, and it brings it down the dress. It brings it down the dress. It's good to also remove belts that are never gonna work. I bought this like a kimono belt, but it's too big for me and I can't make it smaller. So that's gonna go out. This is one of my favorite belts I got from Ericsson Beeman, which is a beautiful jewelry shop on Elizabeth Street in London. And I just loved the chain mail of it, but it's broken. So I'm gonna take it to my man on the King's Road and try and get him to affix it. Because when I wear this belt, it's just such a beautiful central piece that can make any outfit just change up totally and look like it's part of the dress. So I wear it with black, white, and gold. So let's go to the belt moment and see what I can ruffle up. I'm just gonna take this and just see would this work well. Oh, if it still can fit. Yes, I, I, I much prefer that as a silhouette, just yeah. to get my waist back, to get the flow, to have the buttons open. And because it's a skirt, the buttons can open really high. And then you get that kind of nice, slightly more hourglass shape. One of my favorite vintage belts was this belt I got probably about 10 years ago. It's Saint Laurent. I think it's 70s Saint Laurent, but it's curved. So that when you put it on with a dress, which is slightly A-line, the bottom bit of the belt is wider than the top. So it gives you the most already exaggerated waist. It's just so clever. I've never seen a belt like this since. And if I just do it up, I can show you, but it's an exciting, whenever I go in a vintage shop, the first area I look at is the belt section. 
And I think I'm going to do a closet confession soon, just doing a lot of plain dresses and putting a belt on so you can see the difference and be inspired because belts are not classically in fashion right now. There's a lot of oversized stuff, so it doesn't really want to emphasize that female form. And a belt is about emphasizing the female form. And I think I want to get back to dressing a little bit more feminine. Bought my high heels, which I'll go into later. So I hope you've enjoyed the belts video. My worry is that I've done this film and Lila's going to watch it. She's coming up the stairs now and discover some belts that she didn't realise I had. They're something that are really worth collecting and holding on to. And I think they always come back in fashion. And it's all about your shape. And remember at the top what I said about the width of belt for how long or short your waist is. So until next week, bye.